I'm currently doing a PhD in, at the University of Porto in Portugal, and I'm studying uh, how peripheral neuropathy first uh, is present in Parkinson's disease, which is something that is not really uh, as investigated yet. And, uh, and then also if peripheral neuropathy affects uh, uh, gait imbalance in Parkinson's. So that's why we decided to do a cross-sectional study with uh, um group of uh, Parkinson's disease patients from the movement disorder uh, consultees uh, from the university, University Hospital of Portugal, which is the Centro Hospitalar do Porto. And uh, we first wanted to understand the, pre the prevalence of peripheral neuropathy in Parkinson's disease. And then we selected this uh, specific subset of patients and we, understand, uh, we understood if the um, gait imbalance uh, was different and we expected that it was actually. Uh, but it's something that actually it never been investigated, especially with uh, wearable technology, which is the, the ones that we are using. We are using two different types of uh, wearable devices, which are little sensors that we put on the feet and on the lower back of the patient, coming from two different uh, brands, two different countries, one from Switzerland and the other brand is from uh, Germany. And uh, this is why, because we are um, a group um, from the Marie Curie Fellowship, a group um, who investigated uh, these specific um, the specific uh, aims uh, together. So we, we decided to use both the sensor and to collaborate with both these brands. And um, and I just uh, assessed uh, the entire cohort of our Parkinson's disease patients that we uh, wanted to, to, to investigate. And we then analyzed uh, all the data. So that was uh, our aim in the end. <laughs> so we, we found, uh, uh, we actually found that almost the 40% of our PD patients have peripheral neuropathy. And we also divided, we tried to understand the type of peripheral neuropathy, which is a, a large fiber involvement, small fiber involvement, or both fiber, uh, large and small fiber involvement. We found that mostly the 27, 27.8% of our Parkinson's disease patients with the peripheral neuropathy has a, a small fiber involvement, which is also something that we were expecting. And uh, um, and we selected these uh, patients, uh, which were 39, because our cohort was uh, of uh, 99 patients. We, so we, under, we assessed 99 PD patients from our un, uh, university hospital. And uh, um, we performed a series of uh, uh, gait and balance assessment with, with uh, wearable devices, which involve, involves... Uh, um, gait, for example, uh, straight walking, circular walking, or balance, which, for example, was um, the balance test on the on the foam, uh, on the pillow, with eyes closed and eyes open. So, um, a, a very big uh, uh, group of uh, of gait and balance. Um, uh, exercises and tasks to try to understand if it was there was a really a difference, and we we found that actually there's a, a significantly difference in the distance time. The um, peripheral neuropathy Parkinson's disease patients have a longer stance time than uh, a significantly longer stance time than uh, um, Parkinson's disease patients without peripheral neuropathy, and also uh, very interesting. Uh, in my opinion, uh, on um, the results uh, of balance, we found actually a very interesting result in the open eyes uh, balance test on the phone, on the phone, because uh, um, we found that peripheral neuropathy patients, peripheral neuropathy Parkinson's disease patients, have a very uh, larger and um, wider um, distance from the center of mass, so they move more but more during uh, open eyes than, for example, compared to the closed eyes. So they just seems, in my opinion, that um, during the closed eyes, they, they are more uh, stable than, for example, during open eyes. Um, and this was compared to the, the Parkinson's disease patients. So, yeah, we found these main big two results. Uh, we are also analyzing at the moment uh, different uh, gate parameters 
such as, for example, the clearance, which is very interesting because this is why we put, for example, patients uh, walk and put the the feet on the on the ground. So it would be also interesting to understand if there is a difference in uh, in these terms. Um, and also, we found a significantly difference in uh, uh, in the turnings. And it was independently from the site of the affected site of the Parkinson's disease. So this is, was also interesting to understand that uh, during turnings, uh, the peripheral neuropathy Parkinson disease patients uh, took more time to to complete the turns, the turnings. So yes, this is something that we analyzed, and also we performed the same assessment during off and on medication states, and we found that actually. Um, during on medication states, there are no differences, no significantly differences. Uh, that's because probably the medication can really help to cover also the the, the peripheral neuropathy impairment, we can say. Uh, and during off medication states, so without uh, taking medication, um, the effects are more um, significant. So we have a higher um, um, significantly effects of medication. For example, I think this study could help clinicians to um, deal with the peripheral Parkinson's disease patients to try to also uh, include some specific therapies in, uh, in the recovery of, prefer of Parkinson's disease patients, and also to con always considering this possibility that the Parkinson's disease patient can have a peripheral nervous system involvement and a peripheral nervous system uh, impairment. So it is important for the prognosis and also for, for, for the cure.